So this question right off the bat, I was an unbelievable asshole and decided to put a normal smear here. Okay, so there's nothing wrong with this blood smear. I literally Googled normal smear and I found this one. And then I just changed the colors and its orientation so that people don't come after me because people give a fuck about uh, someone no one's ever heard of who posts a normal smear on their site. So there's normal smear in a 12-year-old boy who has normal hematologic findings. Hemoglobin 13 to 17.5 is normal. Hematocrit 39 percent. That's fine. Okay, it's fine. I say that uh, 47 plus or minus five is normal for males, uh, but uh, 42 percent plus or minus five normal for females. He has epistaxis. That explains why his hemoglobin's at the lower end of normal. His hematocrit would be uh, at the lower at the lowest end of normal. And it's nothing we're wildly concerned about. White blood cell counts normal, four to eleven thousand. So you say, I don't get it. Like, what, what's going on then? A normal smear in a 12-year-old with uh, epistaxis, what's the problem? Could it just be coincident, or I should say incidental epistaxis with nothing wrong? Yeah, and most of the time, if people have a nosebleed, nothing is wrong. However, the U.S. simile has forced you into a position where you have to choose something being wrong. And in this case, you need to know the diagnosis would be ITP immune thrombocytopenic purpura or idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura, okay? So the mechanism is going to be antibodies against glycoproteins 2B, 3A on platelets, which mediate platelet aggregation, platelets sticking to each other, okay? In contrast, glycoproteins or glycoprotein 1B mediates platelet adhesion, which is the platelet adhering to the underlying collagen. Physiologically, we have fibrin slash fibrinogen. Fibrinogen is more accurate. Uh, bridging glycoproteins 2B, 3A on adjacent platelets for aggregation. And physiologically, it's von Willebrand factor that bridges the platelets uh, 1B glycoprotein to underlying collagen slash vascular endothelium for uh, adhesion. So kid will have a viral infection. This is also an interesting thing students will ask because I didn't write anything about viral infection. USMLE doesn't have to do that, and they often won't. They don't have to tell you that the kid had sniffles for four days. They don't have to say that. Okay, if they do, it's frankly easy. You literally, uh, or I should say, you should be aware that viral infections are often asymptomatic in USMLE. The same way people can have fucking coronavirus and be asymptomatic, right? So you're like, oh, yeah, that's true. So kid has ITP. It's antibodies that are made against the virus. And in turn, uh, molecular mimicry, those antibodies will cross-react um, type, uh, type 2 hypersensitivity against the 2B3A glycoproteins. You need to know that you diagnose with platelet count, which is going to be low. Platelet count is normally 150 to 450, so it's just going to be under 150, okay? Usually under 100,000. Bleeding time will be increased. Bleeding time is normally 2 to 7 minutes. Bleeding time will be greater than 7 minutes. So there's a lot we can chat about. I could literally turn this into, I'm not joking, like a 90-minute heme discussion. I'll try to be concise enough. Um, but if the USMLE asks you how you diagnose ITP, if it's platelet count being low, or if it's bleeding time, which of course is high, you're forced to choose. You're going to choose platelet count, not bleeding time. I've seen them both uh, on an NBME question, okay? So you choose platelet count. Um, I would guess that maybe three quarters of your ITP questions in USMLE are going to be a school age kid who has a viral infection. As I said, they might not tell you the viral infection. And then he's going to have epistaxis or petechiae, bruising. Platelet issues present as generally minor cutaneous findings. Petechiae, okay, bruising, or just epistaxis, usually minor. It's clotting factor problems that are more severe, uh, like excessive bleeding after tooth extraction, menorrhagia in females. Uh, they like hemarthrosis. That's more um, hemophilia. Uh, a lot we can chat about. So this is classic ITP. About three quarters to, yeah, maybe four, I'd say, yeah, three quarters of your questions would be bleeding in a school-age kid of this nature, more minor bleeding epistaxis. About a quarter of your questions or a third of your questions are going to be a woman in her 30s or 40s with just random bruising. And then she's going to have an elevated bleeding time. 
slash low plate account. Okay. That's especially important for family medicine for 2CK. They'll give you a woman who's 33 and she just has random bruising and they'll have domestic abuse as an answer. And it is correct if they tell you her platelet count and her bleeding time are normal. It's ITP if her bleeding time is elevated, platelet count is low. Okay, so uh, why it will randomly occur in women who are 30s, 40s, no fucking idea. Okay, uh, but ITP can have a familial propensity, although no strict inheritance pattern. Uh, the the patient's propensity to develop it. Okay, in response to viral infections, etc. So. Uh, looking at some of the other answer choices without going too heavy on discussion, just alpha hemoglobin obviously is going to be alpha thalassemia. You can have alpha thalassemia silent with one mutation, patient's asymptomatic. Uh, two mutations, alpha thalassemia trait, a uh, patient can present as uh, akin to having a minor uh, anemia. Uh, three mutations, hemoglobin H disease, okay? Uh, very, very, very sick if they don't die when they're young. And then four means, and you get beta tetramers in hemoglobin H disease. That's what hemoglobin H is. Uh, four mutations is hemoglobin BARTs. Those are gamma uh, tetramers. Uh, a kid will die in utero uh, with uh, hydrops fetalis. Okay, so alpha thalassemia. It's just defective uh, alpha hemoglobin. Uh, uh, adult hemoglobin should be alpha two, beta two. So you can't make your alpha two appropriately. Anchorin, that's a good distractor here. This is a, yeah, this was an asshole answer choice on my end. I was like, I think some students would choose this if they don't know what's going on. So this is hereditary spherocytosis, mutations in anchorin spectrin or band proteins, which are cytoskeletal proteins for the RBC. So uh, hereditary humor, uh, hereditary spherocytosis, I literally almost said hemochromatosis. Hereditary spherocytosis uh, will give you uh, smaller RBCs, but and they're spherical, uh, but they have they lack central pallor, and patient will have almost always increased MCHC, mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration. You diagnose via osmotic fragility test. Okay, there's also a newer test called eosin five malamide. Uh, just be aware of it. Eosin five malamide sounds really fucking weird, uh, but osmotic fragility test is gold standard. Uh, but it's autosomal dominant, so they'll tell you that. Uh, there's a kid who has a low hemoglobin and then they'll say like his dad had his spleen removed for a quote unquote blood condition earlier in life. And that's referring to um, hereditary spherocytosis. Okay. And then beta, beta hemoglobin, uh, a lot we can chat about beta hemoglobin, obviously beta thalassemia. Okay. And that's, that's a defective beta hemoglobin. So uh, if you have one mutation, beta thalassemia minor, that's generally going to be a young adult, teenager, young adult with an anemia type disorder. And uh, if you have beta thalassemia major, it's going to be a very sick kid, okay? Extra, uh, extramedullary hematopoiesis. Uh, they can give you the chipmunk skull, okay? They can uh, tell you that uh, hemoglobin, A, hemoglobin A2, so that's alpha 2, delta 2, that's increased. So if you get a big fucking paragraph for a USMLE question, and then in the last line, they say, by the way, hemoglobin A2 is elevated. They're referring to beta thalassemia, okay? If you can't make beta, then rather than making hemoglobin A1, which is just normal adult hemoglobin, alpha 2, beta 2, you make more alpha 2, delta 2 instead, hemoglobin A2. So uh, hemoglobin A2 is what we see in beta thalassemia high yield, okay, for US and LA. Um, once again, tons we can chat about. I'm just going to try to move us through a little bit more. I didn't mention for uh, ITP, you need to know that steroids are the first treatment. If steroids are not effective, you move on to IVIG. And then finally, uh, splenectomy is the treatment for ITP. And once again, glycoproteins 2B3A. Von Willebrand factor, uh, as we said, this is going to bridge glycoprotein 1B to underlying collagen. And von Willebrand factor is autosomal dominant. And this is going to present as generally a teenager, often a girl. And it can be a guy, but they like to give you a girl. They reward you for knowing the inheritance pattern. So if you know hemophilia, for instance, is X-linked recessive, hemophilia A and B, and it's a girl in the presentation, you can eliminate those as answer choices if they're listed. They'll give you like a 17-year-old girl. 
and she's going to have one platelet problem and one clotting factor problem. So it'll tell you she has nosebleeds, and they might say she has heavy periods, and that's referring to von Willebrand disease, okay? And your bleeding time will be elevated, and your PTT will be elevated about half the time. Uh, I could literally do a 90-minute presentation on all this stuff. Uh, I just want to stay concise enough, okay? I'll make other questions. I have made questions on some heme disorders before, but this is ITP in summary. And it's antibodies against glycoproteins 2B, 3A. Uh, Two-thirds to three-quarters of your question is going to be a school-aged kid with a viral infection, although he can be asymptomatic. He's just going to have nosebleeds or easy bruising or petechiae. And you just need to know that steroids the treatment, followed by IVIG, followed by splenectomy. And uh, the other third to uh, one-quarter to third of questions will be a woman in her 30s or 40s with random bruising who has an elevated bleeding time slash low platelet count. And your smear is going to be normal in ITP. Okay, that's it.